Hello, everyone, and welcome back. As always, I'm your girl, Candy Washington. And before we dive into today's Kiki, which is Erica Jane might be furious. She might be a little pissed off. She might be in her feelings today because Tom Girardi's ex-wife just was awarded and won 200K in back spousal support. Now, we're going to get into it. Because there's two sides to this story, and I want you guys to, I'm going to share you what I think about this, because I think there's two sides to this, and I want you guys to weigh in on what your thoughts are too. But before we do that, you know what to do. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also, be sure to share this with a friend, because a key key is always better with community. Check out the description box down below, and shop our love collection. That's right, you guys. Shop all the check out the description box down below. So with that, let's dive right on in. So this is according to Radar Online. So let's get all the information first. Let's get the facts from the article, and then we're gonna talk about it because I'm on the fence with this one, you guys. I'm on the fence. So we'll talk about it. So this is according to a Radar Online exclusive. Ex-wife of Erica Jane's husband scores $200,000 over unpaid spousal support days after the Real Housewife of Beverly Hills stars infamous diamond earrings, were they the real ones or the swapped ones, were auctioned off. All right, let's keep going. The ex-wife of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Erica Jane's husband, Tom Girardi, hashed out a 200 k deal as part of her disgraced lawyer's bankruptcy over unpaid spousal support, RadarOnline.com has learned. According to court documents obtained by RadarOnline.com, the trustee presiding over Girardi's involuntary Chapter 7 bankruptcy informed the court an agreement had been signed by Girardi's ex-wife, Karen. And Karen is also the mother of his children. Okay, so let's keep going. As RaiderOnline.com previously reported, Karen has been attempting to collect spousal support owed from the now disbarred attorney for over a year. She first filed court documents in August of 2020, accusing Girardi of being in, um, in contempt for failing to pay her the court ordered support from their 1989 divorce settlement. So this was about 30 years ago, maybe like a little less, a little more. Girardi has been paying Karen $10,000 a month for years until he asked in February of 2020. So now about three years ago, because we're almost in 2023, to have it reduced down to $5,000. She claimed Girardi told he was, quote, tired of paying and felt it was long enough. Well, you don't make the rules, Mr. Tom Girardi, even though you thought you did at the time. Eventually, her attorney made a demand and Gibrardi promised he would pay once he received, quote, additional funds, the fraudulent funds. She said he coughed up $40,000 to cover February through March, but still owed $25,000. In October, she said Gibrardi continued to not make payments and owed her $45,000 in back support. At the time, numerous creditors were coming after Girardi over debts. As we know, this was around the time where everything hit the fan, all of the subpoenas, all of the lawsuits, all of the victims, they were coming after Tom. It was hitting the fan. This was also the time where his now arrested CFO did that $10 million um, wire fraud transfer that the feds just arrested him for. So this is all going on around that same time. As RadarOnline.com previously reported, Girardi and his law firm were, were pushed into bankruptcy in late 2020. The once respected attorney stands accused of embezzling millions from his clients and running his firm like a Ponzi scheme. Side note, it's one of the largest Ponzi, Ponzi schemes in California history. It's one of the largest 
criminal fraud cases in California history. Don't forget, he also had his alleged love child, that guy, what was his name? Donald Alway, who was the top LA local FBI agent overseeing this investigation. He has now since recused himself, obviously, since his mother used to be Tom Girardi's secretary. Um, the, his mother also had an affair with Tom Girardi. They look very, very similar. So there's been questions. Is this his, you know, love child, a product of the affair? We also know that Tom Girardi paid this woman hundreds of thousands of dollars. It has been proven that the money came from victims' money, victim funds. So it was fraudulent money. He also paid the mortgage on her home, which is now valued at over $1.2 million. And it's also very suspect that the son, the Donald Alway guy, that the I believe his name is Donald Alway. Check me on that if I'm wrong, but I believe that's what his name is. Transferred from Mississippi to L.A., which is very, very suspicious. Why did you transfer to the jurisdiction that was overseeing the investigation into your alleged father's Ponzi scheme criminal case in California unless you were trying to help him? Now, don't come after me, dude. I'm just saying we're not stupid. All right, let's go. And again, that's my opinion. My opinion, my opinion, my opinion, my opinion. Let's keep going. Okay, now, the bankruptcy put Karen's battle on hold as a trustee was put in charge to deal with Girardi's finances. Karen had placed a lien on one of Girardi's property that sold during the bankruptcy, the home that she was featured on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and the one shared with Jane for years. This is their Pasadena house. So she put a lien on it. So basically, once that Pasadena house sells, if it hasn't already sold, I'm not 100% sure because this was back in 2020, she gets $200,000 from the sale. Per the deal, the trustee agreed to pay Karen $200,000 from the home sale. As a result, Girardi's ex-wife will drop all future claims for support. For her part, Jane is still dealing with a $25 million lawsuit filed against her as part of the bankruptcy. The trustee has demanded she return millions of her husband's firm, um, the millions her husband firm spent on the bills for her company, EJ Global. Now, again, I think EJ Global, and this is my opinion, was a front. It was a way for them to launder money. And it was also a way for them to do tax fraud, which is, again, why they have been slammed from the IRS, Uncle Sam, whoever. I believe she owes about um, $2.27 million in taxes from 2019 alone. Um, so, yeah, they were being shady. It's one thing to defraud us common folks. But when you defraud the government, Uncle Sam's coming for you. Okay. Okay. In addition, Jane had to turn over a pricey set of diamond earrings that Girardi had purchased for her during their marriage. Financial records showed the earrings were brought using his client's funds. Recently, an auction was held and the earrings were sold off for $250,000. Now, don't forget, it's very controversial about these diamond earrings. A, are they the same ones that used to that was valued at seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and at one point one point three million, or did she do a switcheroo like Ronald Richards says? So Ronald Richards is the attorney who's been very very vocal on Twitter, on Instagram, whatever, talking about the Girardi case, and he made the claim that she switched out the earrings. So the earrings that she gave to be auctioned off were not the actual seven hundred and fifty k earrings, which is why when they got appraised in the auction, they were only appraised for about 200, 250k, and that is what they ultimately were sold for. But a little bit of switcheroo, and he was saying that the invoices didn't match up. So basically, Erica did a, oh, you want my earrings? Well, here, you can have the cubic zirconia ones I got from Claire's, and I'll put you in these are the diamonds, and I'm going to hold on to the real diamonds. That needs to be investigated. Why isn't she in jail for that? Why? It, like, it just blows my mind that, again, they're doing these fraudulent things publicly in our faces without any type of repercussions. If you know she returned the wrong earrings, why is she not in trouble for that? Why is she not in trouble for that? Makes no sense. Still corruption, still being protected. But let's keep going. 
Jane filed for divorce in 2020 as Girardi's and legal and financial problems began to mount. The case has been put on hold until the bankruptcy is settled. Okay, you guys. Now, this is the thing and this is the place where it's a little murky for me. So rock with me on this and I want to know what your opinion is. How is it that his ex-wife, Karen, is entitled to back spousal pay of $200,000 when obviously that money is from his schemes, from his frauds, from the Ponzi schemes, from defrauding his clients. So if Erica is not entitled to that money, if Tom's mistress, remember the mistress who's a judge, she's taken a couple of years off because she because she doesn't want to, you know, probably be disbarred because she's associated with all of this. The same exact mistress who's also, again, like I said, a California judge. Tom had paid for her um, law school fees. Tom gave her $300,000 um, to get a, some like summer house. He paid for her plastic surgery and other gifts, right? So when the feds came knocking on her door, knock, 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 you need to give this stuff back. You need to pay restitution. You need to, you know, where are the gifts? If the mistress had to give back the gifts and money, if Erica has to give back the earrings and the money and all of that stuff, why is the ex-wife entitled to this money? To me, it's all fruit of the same poisonous tree. I think Erica Jane should have to give back every damn thing. I think the mistress has to give back every damn thing. I think the ex-wife has to give back every damn thing. Because as we've already known, because the secretary was cheating uh, was cheating with Tom Girardi while he was married to this Karen chick. And if the money he was giving to the mistress has already been um, proven was coming from client funds, then the money that he had during the, the marriage to Karen and after the marriage to Karen was also with client funds. So all of the money is from the fruit of the poisonous tree. It's poisonous fruit of the same poisonous tree, right? I think the ex-wife should not be entitled to anything. I get it. It sucks. You were married to this man. I get it. It's your settlement. But at the end of the day, the money never belonged to him. Therefore, the money never belonged to you. If you were married to someone who did not make a lot of money, you wouldn't be entitled to all of, like, it, it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, the money was never his. That's why the money was never Erica's. That's why the money was never the mistress's. I don't think the ex-wife should get this settlement money. I think that money should go to the victims, to the people whose money it was in the first place. I get it, ex-wife. It sucks. Maybe you knew what he was doing. Most likely you did. Um, I think the ex-wife always knows. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe you, knew, you probably knew what was going on. So I'm sorry, ex-wife Karen, but I don't think this money belongs to you. I think it belongs to the victims. The same exact way. I think that the alleged um, love child, the FBI agent, right? I think his mother should have to give back some money since it's documented that the money that Tom Girardi gave to her was from victims money, fraudulent money. You're living in a $1.2 million house. It's worth at least $1.2 million, but you got the house with the fraudulent money. I think the secretary, the side chick that he allegedly knocked up, and that's the FBI agent's mom, she needs to give some money back. Erica sure as hell does. The mistress judge did because she was like, listen, I got stuff to lose. I didn't want to give this stuff back because this is the thing. The mistress did not, the mistress judge, because there's a lot of mistresses now, the mistress judge didn't give back the stuff out of the kindness of her heart. She gave back the stuff because she got caught. If she wanted to give it out out of the kindness of her heart, let's just pretend she had no idea he was running a Ponzi scheme. Let's just pretend. The moment it came out, she would have given it back. But she waited to see if she was going to get caught. And when she got caught and when the feds knocked on the door, where's the stuff? Then she gave it over, which means... 
I was going to keep this money. I was going to keep this house. I was going to keep this jewelry. I was going to keep these gifts. Since I'm a judge, she doesn't have a better moral compass. She just has a better PR team. The mistress would give it back. And I don't think the ex-wife, not deserves, deserves isn't the right way, term, but the ex-wife is not entitled to this money until every single victim has been made whole. Once they do that, which they clearly have not done yet, whatever's left over, if there's anything left over, then you figure it out. But until every single last victim is made whole, they get every single penny they were entitled to back. The ex-wife, Erica, mistress judge, mistress secretary, love child FBI agent shouldn't get a dime. So although the petty part of me is like, hey, 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 stick it to Erica, the logical, moral, um, human part of me is like, this money doesn't belong to her either. It belongs to the victims. And if I was her, I wouldn't want the money or I would get the money and I would donate it for real, not like dirty Diana Jenkins who lies to the victims. Because like I've said, and I'll say it again, because this is the core essence of it, the money never belonged to them in the first place. That is the problem. But I want to know what you guys think. Put it down below and hang out my candy canes because I want to take some of your candy cane questions and comments. But I'm going to do a quick outro. So put it down below. What do you think? Do you think, yes, the ex-wife should get everything, give it to her? Or, or are you like me and you're like, hold up. This money doesn't belong to any of these people. It doesn't. And I have nothing against really rich or wealthy people at all. But it comes a point where you have enough. Like this chick was getting how much money in X, Y, and Z. I get it. It was your settlement. But come on. There's still victims out there. Put it down below. And what do you think about the diamond switcheroo? Do you think Erica Jane really did switch out the diamond earrings? Like, like Ronald Richard says, I do. And how come she hasn't been held accountable for that? Or do you think the feds is just building their case and building their case and building their case and this will be one part of it? Put it down below. But before you do that, you know what to do. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when we go live. Also be sure to share this with a friend because a kiki is always better with community. Check out the description box down below and shop our love collection. Like, subscribe, shop. All right, you guys, with that, let's take some of your candy cane questions and comments. All right, you guys.